Hi, everyone. My name is Andy Hahn. I'm a GU medical oncologist at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, and I'm joining you from Berlin in Germany, where I've attended the ESMO Congress, and I'm going to be providing you all with an update on the interesting abstracts that were presented in prostate cancer as well as kidney cancer. Now, this is not designed to be a comprehensive overview, but is simply designed to be a teaser to get you go, to go look and read on what was shown here. So with that said, I'm going to spend about one minute on each presentation. I'm going to briefly hit the highlights, study design, and then move on to the next presentation. If you want to learn more, I'll please go review the abstracts from ESMO, and many of these um, were published simultaneously. First, we're going to begin with the Enzerad study. This was presented by Dr. Paul Wynn from Dana-Farber, and the Enzerad study evaluated ADT plus enzalutamide versus ADT plus a non-steroidal antiandrogen for two years for men with localized high risk or very high risk or node positive prostate cancer planning to undergo definitive radiation to the prostate plus or minus the pelvic lymph nodes. This was an investigator initiated trial, so very impressive. It was a large trial. The primary endpoint for this study was metastasis free survival. Patients um, got either, again, radiation to the prostate, and then if they were known to have clinical N1 disease, they got radiation to the pelvic lymph nodes as well. In total, 802 patients were randomized. This group of patients differs a bit from the study that we're going to end up comparing it against, which is the Stampede um, Abiraterone study presented by Dr. Guratard in that this study had a lower fraction of patients who had clinical N1 disease, 11% by conventional imaging. So you had a more of a shift towards clinical T3, grade group 4, 5 disease for this group of patients. That all being said, the NZRAD study did not meet its primary endpoint. There was a 12% reduction in the hazard for metastasis by receiving two years of ADT plus enzalutamide. That result was not statistically significant with eight years of follow-up. Similarly, overall survival was not significantly different between the two groups. There's a 12% reduction in the hazard for death, favoring the addition of enzalutamide, but again, not statistically significant. Notably, this group of patients had a very high prostate cancer-specific survival overall, reflecting the differences in the risk of patients enrolled. Now, they, the, Dr. Wynn and colleagues did a exploratory subgroup analysis on a small group of patients, um, and they demonstrated that there was treatment effect heterogeneity for one group of patients cleanly. Those, that was those who received pelvic field radiation, and then there was a really strong trend for those who had, were noted to be clinical N1 positive, and that's really the same group of patients either way or very similar group of patients. So there is this argument that maybe differences in study populations impacted the results that we've seen from this study. But that all being said, I don't think we're going to see enzalutamide approved in this localized high-risk node-positive setting, but it also should not impact who we're prescribing ADT plus abiraterone to. So on to the next study, the PRESTO trial. This was the final efficacy results presented by Dr. Rahul Agarwal from UCSF. A reminder for everyone, PRESTO is evaluating patients with biochemical recurrent prostate cancer by conventional imaging, short PSA doubling time at less than nine months. And they got one year of um, ADT versus ADT plus aplutamide versus ADT plus aplutamide plus abiraterone. So different variations of intensified hormone therapy. Primary endpoint for the study was PSA progression-free survival. And this study has already published and shown that it significantly improved that endpoint. But here we were getting two key secondary endpoints. And the biggest one was um, we were getting metastasis-free survival by either conventional imaging um, or PSMA PET. So with a median follow-up of 61 months, 503 total randomized patients, there was not a statistically significant improvement in metastasis-free survival for either the ADT plus aplutamide arm, that one was a 20% reduction in the hazard for metastases, or the three hormone therapy arm, that was an 8% reduction in the hazard for metastases. Now the study did meet other secondary endpoints, it significantly reduced the time to see castration-resistant prostate cancer. It significantly improved PSA progression-free survival in a eugonadal or normal testosterone state as well. But all being said, I, I don't think this is going to end up changing our practice overall, but is very informative.
So now moving on to a few studies that may end up kind of informing how we, we practice. The first is the Embark study. So we, we know the Embark study. This was, again, biochemical recurrent prostate cancer for, by conventional imaging. Patients had three arms, ADT, it was one arm, ADT plus enzalutamide, another arm, or ADT, or, sorry, or enzalutamide monotherapy for the final arm. Here, you know, this study has already shown an improvement in metastasis-free survival. Here, we got the data for overall survival. And it was really impressive. This was a, a very impressive accomplishment published in New England Journal of Medicine simultaneously. So Dr. Freeland showed on behalf of his co-investigators that there was a 41% reduction in the hazard for death by giving nine months of ADT plus enzalutamide. And there was an absolute difference in survival of about 9% between the treatment arms with eight years uh, at eight years. So a pretty impressive we did not see the same magnitude of benefit with enzalutamide monotherapy. It was not statistically significant for overall survival. So I think this solidifies the place of ADT plus enzalutamide in the conventional imaging negative biochemical recurrent space. Moving on to um, the metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer space. So we had a study presented by Dr. Kim Chi and representing the cooperative group from, from Canada, evaluating lutetium PSMA randomized against docetaxel. So this is a different population than's really ever been studied with lutetium PSMA before because the PSMA4 study was randomizing against second ARPI, and you're going to have differences in which patients are referred there. But the main takeaway here was that, first, the study did not meet its primary endpoint because there was no significant difference um, in progression-free survival between the two arms. There was a numerical improvement favoring docetaxel, but nothing significant at all. But what was really noteworthy was that there was a significant improvement in survival favoring patients who were randomized to docetaxel, 64% increase in the or reduction in the hazard for death there. And the median survival time was 14 versus 18 months. Now, there's a lot of questions that were um, brought up after this was presented. There's a lot that needs to be unpacked here. It's not been published yet. There's a lot of questions around crossover. But it's provocative. It's the first data we have in this space. All right, so moving on to my final two prostate studies for everybody. This is the Capitello study by, um, presented by Dr. Kareem Fazazi. This is really potentially paradigm changing for patients with metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer. So, this was a phase three industry sponsored study evaluating ADT plus abiraterone plus or minus, or basically plus capivacertib versus. Placebo. So capivacertib is an AKT inhibitor, and this study was really narrowly focused. So it's patients who have at least 90% P10 loss by IHC. Really narrow cohort here. And to show how narrow it is, they screened 6,000 patients to enroll about 1,000. So a huge labor um, just to get this study going and to get it accomplished. So they showed us the, the primary endpoint for the Capitello study. And the addition of capivacerta did significantly reduce the hazard for radiographic disease progression by 19% compared to just ADT plus membrane and plus placebo. Now, um, they showed secondary endpoint for overall survival. It's not met yet. It's immature. So we're still waiting on that endpoint. And then notably, capivacerta is not a, um, it's an oral medicine, but it does come with some, some real side effects. They showed that data. Um, There were notable increases in rashes, diarrhea, hyperglycemia, and and anemia. Um, So the the side effect profile could be substantial here. In my view, this is really exciting data because it's a step towards truly precision medicine in the metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer setting. But I'm guessing it's not quite ready for prime time. We're going to see. We'll see what FDA thinks about it or if we need more mature overall survival. Final study presented for prostate at ESMO Congress was the PSMA addition study by Dr. Scott Tagawa. So PSMA addition was um, was looking again in the metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer space at this time ADT plus an ARPI for everybody plus or minus lutetium PSMA 617 or Pluvicto. And this study, in order to qualify, you needed to have at least one metastasis with an SUV above the background of the liver. So a pretty low bar to qualify. And that was reflected in that 84% of patients screened qualified for the study. This was presented in the biggest plenary session, the Presidential Congress. 
Because PSM Edition met its radiographic progression-free survival endpoint, the addition of lutetium PSMA significantly reduced the hazard for disease progression by 28% compared to ADT plus an AR pathway inhibitor. Overall survival is immature, and there is quite a bit of crossover ongoing. Notably, um, we still don't fully understand the long-term late toxicities associated with early receipt of lutetium PSMA in patients living a really long time. Um, And there were early notes of numerical increases in second malignancies and nephrotoxicity. So everyone's going to be watching that very closely. It'll be really interesting to see how the community reacts to this, as well as what the FDA's reaction is. So that's everything for prostate at the ESMO Congress. It's been a great meeting here and hope to see you guys soon.